everywhere whatever is not given in the question for example if you are trying a question and these alpha beta gamma are not given in the question you are taking them so it's it's important that you define them hello everyone myself shweta ji and today we are starting with uh, another topic which is very interesting in your upsc maths option and that is uh, analytic geometry analytic geometry is a subject for your paper 1 and it is it is there is a myth about this this subject that it's a very difficult subject but it's not believe me all you need is a better understanding of the subject and intuitive ideas are very important because it's a it's geometry you have to see things around you you have you can if you can make the connections with the equations and how they are connected around you if you can see uh Uh, what is a sphere where is the center what is the point if you can see a cylinder or a cone if you can see that in space the equations and everything makes sense right so uh, i'm starting with the a uh, topic and i'll start the this subject with the from the beginning so i have taken today the topic of plane so without wasting any time let's get started so we are starting with plane here is our definition definition says a surface where every point of the line joining any two points on it lie so this is a surface basically so a surface in three dimension where every point so if i take two points any two points on it right and you join them by a line so it consists of infinitely many points obviously line consists of infinitely many points every point on that line also lie on the surface that is called a plane right you have already seen it this is just an extension of a line in three dimension okay so this is the plane general equation of a plane is also proved using this definition only general general equation of a plane is what that is ax plus by plus cz plus d is equals to 0 i hope this also reminds you about equation general equation of a line in two dimension also and we i have just extended one uh, variable here and i have extended it in three dimension so it gives me a plane So ax plus by plus c is equal to zero is what is a line in two dimension, and ax plus by plus c c z plus d is representing a plane in three dimension. Now, why it is a plane? I can prove that this equation is representing a plane using this definition. Okay, what does the definition say? That if you take any two points on, let's take two points on this equation, on this surface. So let x one comma y one comma z one and x2 comma y2 comma z2 lie on plane given by equation 1 right therefore if these are the two points that lie on the surface that means this that satisfy the surface as well so that is ax1 Plus b y one plus c z one plus d is equal to zero, and a x two plus b y two plus c z two plus d is equal to zero. Now, I want to prove that every point that lie on the line joining these two points. Okay, so these these are the two points x one y one z one, and then we have another point x two y two and z two. So what is the point? How can I how can I find this point, uh, which is which uh, lie in the line joining these two points? I can use the section formula. I can use section formula. Let us assume that that is any random point which is dividing this in, in k ratio one. Okay, so. Uh, and i can find that point 
that will be kx2 x1 plus kx2 divided by 1 plus k. This is the x co coordinate and similarly you can find y and z. So I can make that from these two equations. How? See, multiply equation 3 by k and add with equation 2. Add with equation 2. So we have we have a x1 plus kx2 plus b y1 plus ky2 plus c z1 plus kz2 plus t1 plus k. That is equals to 0. And dividing throughout by 1 by 1 plus k, you'll get a times x1 plus kx2 divided by 1 plus k. See, this is exactly the point lying on the line joining these two points. Plus b times y1 plus k by 2 divided by 1 plus k. Plus c z1 plus kz2 divided by 1 plus k. Plus d is equals to 0. So that random point, that arbitrary point I have taken, uh, in the in the line joining these two points lie on that plane because it satisfies the equation of that size, right? So it implies uh, a p point which is x1 plus kx2 divided by 1 plus k, y1 plus ky2 divided by 1 plus k, comma z1 plus kz2 divided by 1 plus k. Satisfy AX plus B1 plus CZ plus D is equals to 0. Where? Where? P is any arbitrary point on line joining. x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z, which implies all points joining, let it be A and B point, joining A and B lie on Ax plus By plus Cz plus D is equals to 0. So this equation uh, this equation is belongs to a surface and that surface is satisfying the definition of being a plane. So, this equation is representing a plane. Okay. After that, if a point is given A, B, C. So, if I have a point, if I know a point on the plane, then also we can find equation of a plane using that point. See, this is very obvious that if Equation of plane, as you have seen, equation of plane is what? Is ax plus by plus cz plus d. So, you have four arbitrary constants here, to, uh, four, sorry, four constants here to find. If I have one condition, if I know one condition on it, that one information about the plane is given that it passes through a, b, c, that means I can eliminate one constant for finding all those, these four constants, I need four equations, right? So, it's not like I can find uh, the, these, this capital A, capital B, capital C, and capital D just using one condition. But yes, one constant can be eliminated from here because I have one condition. So, using this condition, general equation we know. We know general equation of plane is Ax plus b y plus c z plus d is equals to 0. Right? If it passes through, if it passes through a comma b comma c, then capital A a plus b b plus c c plus d is equals to 0. Subtract. 
subtract equation 2 from 1. See what you get? Obviously, D and D will be cancelled and we'll get capital A, X minus A plus capital B, Y minus B plus capital C, Z minus C. And as you can see, I have used these given points A, B, C and capital D is eliminated. So, we have an equation in which we just have to find now this capital A, capital B and capital C. So, we are left with three constants instead of two constants. Okay, so this is our equation. Next, this was a general equation of a plane and then we have normal equation, normal form of equation of plane. So, to start with, we'll assume a few things here. This is x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. Right. And there's a plane. Okay, why we draw a plane like a like a triangle? I hope that part is clear. What what happens here is that there is a plane which is actually it's not a triangle. Plane is not a triangle, but the part of that plane in the first octant I haven't drawn the whole whole uh, plane. I've only drawn the part that is in our first octant, and that will seems to be a a triangle. Okay, so plane is actually extended like this. But but we are considering only the first option and that's how it looks. Okay, so plane is intersecting x-axis, y-axis and z-axis at point A, B and C respectively. Right. We'll consider from the origin, O is in the back side of this plane. So from origin, I'm dropping a perpendicular over this plane. This is the perpendicular. Let us say that this point is P. So, we'll discuss few points here. See, if this OP line makes alpha with the x-axis, beta with the y-axis and gamma with the z-axis. So, if I just talk about uh, zy plane. So, if I'm just talking about this z by plane, this is z x and this is y x and obviously p point is in the space, not in the z y plane specifically. So, this is a point in space. An angle it is making with the y axis is beta. If I drop a perpendicular on the y axis, okay, don't forget that why I'm dropping a perpendicular like that because uh, again, consider the point in the space, not in the plane. It is not in the zy plane. It is in the space. So, that's how perpendicular is dropped. So, what will be this length? If this distance is small p, let op is equal to small p, which is perpendicular line, uh, perpendicular distance from origin to from origin to plane abc to plane abc yes so see this this length will be if this is small p then this length will be p cos beta and this length is actually giving you the y coordinate of the point capital P. So y co coordinate is P cos beta. Similarly, I'll have x coordinate and z coordinate. So before that, let us take a q point also. P point is obviously on the plane. Let us take another point q on the plane, which is simply x comma y comma z. That can be any arbitrary. Point. Q can be an arbitrary. So let Q be any arbitrary point on plane ABC. So what will be coordinate of P? Coordinate of P would be P cos alpha comma 
P cos beta comma P cos gamma, right? Where obviously uh, O P is small p and alpha beta. You need to define every uh, every variable that you're taking. You need to define in your article, in your questions, everywhere, whatever is not given in the question. For example, if you're trying a question and these alpha, beta, gamma are not given in the question, you are taking them. So it's, it's important that you define them. So and alpha, beta, gamma are angles that OP makes with makes with x-axis, y-axis, z-axis respectively. Also, now what is direction ratios? Direction ratios of PQ. Okay, so if you uh, think that you forgot few basic concepts, so there's nothing to worry about it. Obviously, you need uh, require some prerequisites, but it doesn't mean that now you start following and start uh, geometry from the very basic class one, uh, class eleven, class twelve, and you start reading the NCRT and stuff like that. Don't do that. If you think that okay, there is a concept which I which I'm supposed to know, but I do not, then just make a box in your notes. In, in between your notes, so I'll I'll make a small box here. Why it's important to write the basic concepts separately? Because when you revisit these pages, when you when you are going through a revision or something, so you these boxes catch your attention, and you should be aware. Okay, that this was a very basic concept I was supposed to know, and uh, that's how you revise these concepts. Also. Okay, I call this box R O B M. What is that? That is revision of basic mathematics. So, for example, if you have forgotten the concept of uh, direction ratios, so no problem. Just make a line, right? I'm, I'm taking two points here: a1, a1, b1, c1, or or let's say a, b, c is the point, and p, q, r is the point on that line, and line is l. So, how you are supposed to find uh, direction uh, ratios? You write direction ratios of line L is given by P minus A, Q minus B and R minus C. Okay, and that's it. That's it. Move ahead. Now, direction and if uh, there is something more related to a prerequisite that is required, I'll, I'll definitely tell you and I, or I'll also tell you what material you should follow. Like for the prerequisite of, of let's say ellipse and you've forgotten the properties of the ellipse. So maybe uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll tell you the material or I'll provide you with a PDF that has all the properties of the ellipse. Okay, but please don't waste your time to go through all the basic concepts and then you'll start doing it. That's simply a waste of time. Also now direction ratios of PQ because I know the coordinates of P also. This is the coordinate of P. Q, I have taken X, Y, Z. So I have two coordinates. I can find direction ratios, and that would be uh, direction ratios are p cos alpha minus x, p cos beta minus y, and p cos gamma minus z, and Direction ratios of OP. So O is the origin and P, P point we also know. So that will be P cos alpha minus 0, P cos beta minus 0 and P cos gamma minus 0. Now, again, one property of the direction ratios. If, there, if two lines have direction ratios A1, B1, C1 and A2, B2, C2 respectively, then, and, and, and if these two lines are perpendicular, then A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 is equal to C2. Okay. This, is, this is the property that you should know, but if you do not, just make a box and 
and don't be afraid of making these boxes because see if you are weak in these basic concepts this is what is making it strong don't get demotivated that i'm i don't know these basic concepts and all all, all these kind of things don't don't uh, think like that it's it's good that now you are going through the concept and now you are revisiting those concepts so it's better to collect them rather than cry about them so we know obviously p was a point it was a foot of the perpendicular that was drawn from the point o to the plane so op is actually perpendicular to every line that you draw on that line uh, on that plane and pq is one of that line on the plane so op is perpendicular to pq we know op is perpendicular to pq so a1 a2 that means direction ratio first direction ratio is p cos p cos alpha minus x times p cos alpha plus p cos beta minus y minus y p cos beta plus p cos gamma minus z p cos gamma that is equals to zero so this will give you obviously this uh, p can be taken common and uh, that will give us see this is p square okay p common right so p cos square alpha minus x cos alpha plus p cos square beta minus y cos beta plus p cos square gamma minus z cos gamma is equals to z so here p cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is equals to p right And this will be p times one. This is x cos alpha plus y cos beta plus z cos gamma. Now, uh, why I have written this one? This gives you your third box of R O B M revision of basic mathematics, which says these are what these are called direction cosines, and the property of the direction cosine is l squared plus m squared plus n squared equals to one. That's how this comes. so this will be usually we denote it by l m and n these are direction cosine uh, direction cosines of of a line so this is lx plus my plus nz equals to p i want you to uh, see this last equation that we have obtained uh, carefully once again what is this l m n L, M, N are the direction cosines, but direction cosines and direction ratios are the concepts that are that are associated with the line. So, which line are we talking about? Because because this uh, this is the equation of a plane, not a line, right? So, which line are we talking about here? This alpha, beta, gamma were the angles made by the line OP with the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis respectively. So, OP line is perpendicular to the plane. So, the line. For which the direction cosines are these L M N are is the line which is perpendicular to the plane. I repeat this: if you have a plane, right, and you have a you have a line which is perpendicular to this plane, then direction cosines. Are these 
coefficients. But direction cosines are these coefficients only if this is the normal form. Only if this is the normal form, right? So let me just. Achha, what if it is not the normal form? Then can we say anything about these coefficients? Yes. Even in the general equation ax plus by plus cz plus b is equals to 0, these are, these are direction ratios of normal of the plane. Okay. So, if it is normal form, then those coefficients are in particular direction cosines. And you can also check whether they are direction cosines or not because of the property L square plus N square plus N square equals to 1. If it is satisfying that property, then it is direction cosine. Otherwise, it is direction ratio. Simple. And also, that will also say that this is not the normal form. Because in normal form, coefficients are direction cosines. Okay. So, this is what we have in the normal form forms of equation of plane. Next, we have this intercept form. Let, let us discuss that on the next slide. Intercept form. Intercept form of equation of plane. So here, if you have a plane whose intercepts on the x-axis, y-axis and the z-axis are from A, B, C. This is x-axis, this is y-axis and this is z-axis. So this is A, 0, 0. This is 0, B, 0. And this is 0, 0, C. Okay. So if you drop a perpendicular, from again O to P, this is a perpendicular distance, it's a small P, and the angles are alpha, beta, gamma with the XL, then normal form. Normal form is given by cos alpha x plus cos beta y plus cos gamma z equals to p. Right? Let's talk about that cos alpha cos beta again. So uh, that cos beta it has a relation with that p. So we have drawn it here. We have considered this z y here. Here we have considered and this was p cos beta. Right? So I can say that If I take that point, if I take this point, okay, I have already taken these uh, coordinates A, B, C. So, so if you drop a perpendicular on this, so this will be. You join this B point with this P point. This is B and B point is also on the plane. P point is also on the plane and OP line that you have drawn will be perpendicular to every line on the plane. So OP is perpendicular to PB. If OP is perpendicular to PB, this OB length is B, small b. So let me draw that triangle. So it is something like that. That we have O here, we have P here, we have 90 degree here. This is B, and this is small b. And this angle is B. So and this is P. So what is cos beta? That is very obvious. Cos beta is P by B here. Right, base upon 
hypotenuse. So similarly, you'll have cos alpha and cos gamma also. That is P by A, X, P by B, Y, plus P by C, Z is equals to P. This P cancels and you'll get X by A plus Y by B plus Z by C equals to 1. I hope that this also reminds you about the intercept form of the equation of a straight line, which is also like that, x by a plus y by b equals to 1, okay? Now, here you can actually go in the other way round as well. Other way round means if you have a general equation, if ax plus by plus cz plus d equals to 0 is general equation of of play. So can you find intercepts from this? You can actually write this equation in this form. How? This can be written as x divided by if this then this it can be rewritten as it can be rewritten as x divided by minus b by a plus y divided by minus b by b plus z divided by minus b by c. That is equals to 1. Therefore, x intercept is, and now you can make the comparison. This denominator is representing the intercept on x-axis. Similarly, y-axis and z-axis. So, this is representing. Therefore, x intercept is minus d by a. y intercept is minus d by b. And z-intercept is minus b by c. These are the intercepts. Let's do a question. Find find the intercept made on the coordinate axis by the plane this. Also find the direction cosines of the normal of the plane. Okay. So, just write it in this form, x by a plus y by b plus z by c equals to 1 and you will get your intercept. So this is simply x by 9 plus y divided by 9 by 2 plus z divided by minus 9 by 2 equals to 1. So here you get uh, intercepts. Find the intercept. No? So intercepts on x-axis, y-axis and z-axis are respectively. 9, 9 by 2, and minus 9. Intercepts on x-axis, y-axis, z-axis are 9, 9 by 2, minus 9 by 2, respectively. Easy? Also find the direction for signs of the normal. Now see, again, uh, if you do not uh, have this direction ratio, direction cosines very uh, on, on, on your tips. You know? So here is one another property and again you need to write it in a box. If you don't remember, please do that. And that property is if you know direction ratios, then you can find direction cosines. I just told you that not every equation will give you uh, direction cosines of the norm. A general equation, look at the coefficient. Coefficients are 1, 2, and minus 2. This, if I compare them with n, m, n, they are not satisfying the property n square plus n square plus n square equals to 1. So that means definitely these are not the direction for signs. And why these are not direction for signs? Because the equation is a general equation, not the normal form of the equation. But it's it doesn't mean that they are no, of no significance. They are giving me direction ratios instead of direction for signs. Okay, so we have the direction ratios. But how, how can we convert direction ratios to uh, direction cosines? So again, revision of basic mathematics and write it down that if A, B, C are direction ratios, then direction cosines are given as A divided by root of A square plus B square plus C square. Similarly, b by root of under root same and the last is c root of 
summation of a square. These are your direction ratios. So direction cosines are, you'll write, we know direction ratios of normal of plane is given by coefficients 1, 2 and minus 1. Therefore, direction for signs are 1 divided by root of 1 square plus 2 square plus minus 2 square comma 2 divided by 3 minus 2 divided by 3. So, this is direction for signs are 1 by 3, 2 by 3 and minus 2 by 3. Actually, we can also find normal form from the general form, but that was unnecessary job. If it is explicitly required, if it is explicitly asked in the question, then I'll do it. But just to find the direction ratio, there was no need to convert the general form into normal form. But we can do that. See, let's see how can I reduce general equation. Okay. Uh, reduction of general equation to normal form of the plane. How? So we have to start with ax plus by plus cz plus d is equals to 0. That's equation number 1. In normal form, in normal form, equation of plane becomes cos alpha x plus cos beta y plus cos gamma z is equals to p. Right? In both, both these equations are representing the same plane. One is a general uh, form of the equation and another is normal form of the equation. So, if both, if both equations represent the same plane, then Then let's compare their coefficients. It would be cos alpha divided by cos alpha divided by a will be equals to cos beta divided by b will be equals to cos gamma divided by c will be equals to minus t divided by d. And the catch is over here. This can be written as each fraction here. There are four fractions you can see. Each fraction here is equals to plus minus under root of cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma divided by under root of a square plus b square plus c square and that comes out to be plus minus 1 divided by root of a square plus b square plus c square. Okay. Each fraction here, first four fractions, can be uh, each four fraction in the first four fraction is equal to the last fraction. Okay, so I'm making the comparison. Okay, basically, I'm trying to find cos alpha, cos beta, and cos gamma here because A, B, C are known. Capital A, capital B, capital C are known. Right? General equation is known. And what we are trying to find is the normal form where we require cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma, and B. And that will be obtained by equating each fraction, each uh, fraction from the first four fraction to the last. So. But the confusion is again for plus minus. Should I use plus or minus? So that's a very simple. What is P? P is a perpendicular distance, small p. Perpendicular distance cannot be negative. So I have to choose that plus minus sign uh, from the end in such a way that P is positive. Okay. So if this is negative and uh, I have chosen a negative sign here as well, then D has to be positive. So, everything now depends upon D. So, let's say, let us assume first that D is positive. So, if D is positive, then I will choose the negative sign. If D is positive, see, first fraction is cos alpha divided by A. So, cos alpha is A times 3 minus A. I have chosen one with the minus, minus and under root of summation a square. 
Similarly, cos beta would be minus b by under root summation a square and cos gamma is equals to minus t divided by under root summation b square. So, in this way, p would be small p would be small p would be positive now so small p because we have a negative sign uh, for that p and d is positive so d divided by the root of summation of a square so we have a positive value of p okay and if d is if d is negative, then we have to choose the positive values. We have to choose this cos alpha will be a divided by root a square under root. Cos beta is equals to b divided by root summation a square. Cos gamma is equals to c divided by root summation a square. And p is equals to minus d divided by root of a squared the reason being we had we had a minus uh, here minus p by d but d being negative that value of p is also positive okay so that's how you can convert general equation to the normal equation again we have a question here and with this one we'll finish this a plane needs the coordinate axis in A, B, C. Okay. So there is a plane which meet axis in the point A, B, and C. So such that the centroid of A, B, C is the point P, Q, R. Okay. But if I take this A, B, C, as a comma zero comma zero these are actually the intercepts on x axis y axis z axis so a zero 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 b zero and zero zero c these are the three points it says centroid okay so centroid of this triangle i can find uh, that is uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 if these are the three x coordinates of the of these vertices of the triangle x1, x2, x3, then you can add them, you can divide it by 3, and that's how you find cent. Again, if you don't know the this one, put it in a box, call it revision of basic mathematics, ROBM, make a triangle, write all the points. I'm just writing the x component, x1, x2, and x3. Okay, similarly, you write y1, y2, y3, z3, z3 and Okay, so so uh, centroid is given as x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3, comma y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3, and so Okay, so in this way, what will be the centroid of this triangle? Centroid of this triangle will be a plus 0 plus 0 by 3. So centroid would be a by 3 plus b by 3. a by 3 comma b by 3 comma c by 3 but centroid they have given the question as pqr so this is actually pqr moving ahead show that the equation of the plane i know what are the intercepts i can simply use intercept form and i can find the equation so equation of plane is x by a plus y by b plus c by d equals to y by b plus z by c is equals to 1. Use the values of a, b, c from here because obviously a, b, c cannot be the, in the final answer, the final uh, equation because a, b, c are the variables that we have taken. That is not given in the question. So from 1, I can find a, b, c values and that would be x by 3p plus y by 3q plus z by 3r. Is equals to 1. So, we have taken here to 1. 
and this is your equation. This is your equation of plane. Okay. So uh, I hope uh, this this lecture was useful for you. I'll continue this uh, with the with the next uh, uh, videos. So that's it for today. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.